the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. It washes white as restoration without the blood you can have some restoration but not total restoration it's only the blood that can give that because the blood washes bright and snow hallelujah hallelujah father we thank you for the blood that was shed we thank you for the blood that was shed on the cross of Calvary Thank you for the blood. Thank you because there is no sin as powerful as the blood. And thank you so much, O oh Lord, my God, because there is no devil that is as powerful as the blood. Father, we give you praise for the blood. Thank you that we have access to the blood. Thank you for the blood that cleanses us continually from all forms of unrighteousness. Father, we give you praise. We are standing before you this morning because of the blood. We are here because of the blood. We, Lord, we are here because of the blood. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Hallelujah. We give you glory, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We adore you, Lord. Thank you for the blood that was shed. Thank you for the blood that was shed. Can you thank him for the blood? Can you thank him for the blood? Can you thank him for the blood this morning? Just thank him for the blood. The blood, the blood, the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. Father, we give you praise, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, and everybody say, Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. And how has been the three days of praying and fasting? Amen. Maybe I should have asked, did you fast first of all? Maybe that will have been the first question. Did you fast? Okay, did you try to fast? Many years ago, when I was working at the teaching hospital, uh, Ogun State University Teaching Hospital, I had an attendant, a Muslim. And during the time of praying and fasting of Muslims, and they would just... Ah. I said, what is happening, Mr. Shuaibu? Ah, he said, Oga fasting. Oh. You, know, you don't have to do like this and walk into the journey. So that will ask you what happened. Ah, fasting. You know, you don't need to do all of that. Praise God. Because God is looking at the heart. Are you listening to me? And even if you have not fasted, there's another chance. There will be another one that you can be part of it. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I'm so glad to see every one of you and everyone this morning. Last Sunday was Father's Day. And this morning, when I saw some of us walk into church with a cap, I said, wow. Pray. You know, I told Domingo, I don't want to be seeing that cap again. You must be wearing this one. <laughs> Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. This one is better. I'm a blessed dad. Wear yours too. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. The Lord is good. I said the Lord is good. 
And all the time, the Lord is good. You know, sometimes it goes, some, you know, when we're in church and you start, you're hearing the uh, children making some noises and then everything, you feel, oh, this is a bit, they should keep quiet. But these days when I hear the noise, I just remember the goodness of the Lord. Are you listening to me? I just remember the goodness of the Lord. Supposing they were not there. Supposing everybody is just trusting God for the fruit of the womb. You know? So, but we thank God. We thank God that God has blessed us with them. Amen? Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Today is communion. And before then, I want to share with us some of the things that the Lord has been reminding us of. And open our eyes to see once again. I've not been able to just leave Abraham alone. For quite a while we've been on Abraham. His journey. His faith. The lessons to learn from his life. And I can tell you there are so many. For 24 years, this man walked with the Lord. 24 years. Trusting God for the promise. Hoping for the promise. And I'm sure at a particular stage, it will be looking as if, when will this promise come to pass? You know, it's easier to wait for two weeks. Hello? You know, it's easier to wait for even three weeks. Or one year. Or two years. By the time it's getting to about five. And getting to about ten. And getting to about twenty, you start to what? And say, hey, <laughs> something is happening here, Lord. When will this come to pass? And don't forget that at this time he did not have Genesis. He did not have Exodus. He did not have Numbers and Leviticus. He did not have the scriptures. The only thing that Abraham had was God and the voice of God. Just that. Nothing else. So you could imagine how probably challenging it's been, it was for him. But thank God, if he made it, you will make it. I said, if he made it, we will make it. In Jesus' mighty name. So this morning, I want to take us back to Abraham. And the title of the message is, Giving Glory to God Before and After. Giving Glory to God Before and what? And After. Giving Glory to God Before and After. And let's go back to the book of Romans once again. Romans chapter number 4. You know, it's easier to give glory to God when all the promises have been fulfilled. And that is what the entire world, what, we, what people know about. And many in the church, what they know about is thanking God when the promises have been what? Fulfilled. When the prayers have been answered. When the thing you're trusting God for has showed up and then you want to share the testimony, you want to dance and rejoice that God has done it. But can you thank God when you are yet to see it? I said, can you give glory to God when the promise has not manifested yet? Somebody said that is difficult, but that is also faith. Amen. Because there, practically every one of us in this hall at this time, there are still things you are trusting God for. Hello? Somebody said maybe, you know, there are some people they are not trusting. 
I don't think there's any believer that is alive that does not have something that he what? Is believing God for. Because we are all on a journey and the destination is God. So let's go to Romans chapter number 4. And I'll start to read from verse number 16. It reads, and I quote, Therefore, I've told us, anytime you find the word therefore, stop and ask, what is it there for? So it is of faith that it might be according to grace, so that the promise might be sure to all the seeds, not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who are of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. Now let me read to yours from the NIV. Verse 16. Therefore the promise comes by what? So that it may be by and may be guaranteed to all Abraham's offspring. Not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who are of the faith of Abraham, he is the father of us all. The promise comes by faith. So that it may be by grace. You know, grace is a leveler. The promise comes by faith, so that it will be by grace. Amen. So what God gives, what God gives, we must receive. What God gives, we must receive. When God gives, if you don't receive, then the process is not completed. So you have a part to play. You have a role to play in receiving what God has given. The Bible says, therefore the promise comes by what? Faith. But it is guaranteed by grace. The grace of God is to guarantee the promise to us. But you have a part to play in it. So what God gives by grace, we must receive by faith. I'll repeat. What God gives by grace, we must receive by faith. What is grace? Grace is free gift. You don't have to pay for it. Grace is God's riches at Christ's expense. You are not going to be charged for it. But you have a part to play in it in that when God gives it, you must receive it. Let me say this. Let me show you something. Can I have someone to volunteer this morning? Okay. Thank you, doctor. I have this very powerful iPad. The very latest in town. Only three of us have this iPad in the world. Myself, the president of the U.S., and the prime minister of the U.K., You know, just, just follow my story. <laughs> just follow my story. <laughs> Praise the name of, that's my iPad. But you know, and I said, I want to give this iPad out as a grace gift. And I said, doctor, I want to just bless you with this iPad. Did you see what happened? Supposing I said, I want to bless you with this iPad. And now, same thing. Let me try and bless him with the iPad. Is he receiving the iPad now? What is happening? He's not receiving it. Even though I said, take this iPad, I said, three of us only have it. This is a special iPad. This is a powerful iPad. And I just want to bless you with it. I want to give you this iPad. And he does like this. It's difficult. Even if I say, I'm going to stick it to him. Even though, you know, I, I, even though from my heart, my desire... I said, I just want to bless you with this iPad. 
but he must also stretch forth his hands toward. Because as long as there's no receiver, what happens? There's an abortion of my purpose. So instead of the purpose being accomplished, what happens is that the entire thing is what? Because I've tried. I called him. I, 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 I got the iPad. I called him. And I said, you must have it. But when I extended the gift to him, don't think that is absurd. Because many times, that is the way believers are. God gives by grace. But that is not the end of it. You must receive by faith. Because what God gives, we must receive. What God provides, we must possess. The giving is his own doing, but the receiving is our responsibility. Because if we don't receive it, what happens is that it remains. Because this is so important. That's why the Bible says, therefore the promise comes by what? By faith. So that it may be by what? Grace. And it is also guaranteed to all Abraham's offspring. That means it's not just for a few people. Everyone can receive. Hello, somebody. You don't need to have PAD to be able to receive. You don't need to have, oh, you don't need to be exceptionally brilliant to receive. You don't need all of that. All you need is a willing heart and a faith that will stretch out and what? Receive. And it is in receiving that we lay claim to the thing that God has given. And the Bible says, it said, therefore the promise comes by what? Faith. So that it might be by grace. And it is guaranteed to everyone, not just a few. Every one of us can receive. Guaranteed to all Abraham's offspring. Not only those who are of the law. What does that mean? Not only those who are the natural children of Abraham. Because you have the natural children of Abraham, the Jews. But you have those who are not natural children, but those who are the faith of Abraham, you and I. And the Bible says, is the father of us all. You will never find Abraham being called the father of faith in, Bi in the Bible. But this is where... That's in, that, that terminology actually emerged from. Because in the Bible, he's called the father of us all. So many people call him the father of faith. Don't ever forget this. That if you don't receive what God has provided or what God has given, you are not likely going to experience it. And let me say this. What God gives by grace, we must receive by word. By faith. And this is where sometimes we miss it. Because we are checking out our feelings. We are checking out our... Ex to, 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 oh, let me check. whether do, have, have I really received it? And feelings can deceive. Hello, somebody. Feelings, that's why we receive by faith. What is faith? Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. You have not yet seen it, but you have believed. You have not yet experienced it, but you are holding on to it. Why? Because of your faith in God. Amen. Praise God. I said, praise God. I said, praise God. You don't receive by your feelings. You receive by faith. 
Sometimes our feelings can deceive us. You don't receive by, oh yes, oh I don't, I don't feel good. This, uh, uh, no, 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 no. You don't receive by that at all. So then what, is the, what, what, what gives me the assurance that God is his word? His word. That is why it's important to know the word. Hello. Hello, somebody. He now says in verse 17. What is verse 17? Then, as it is what? As it is what? Written. Written. As it is written. I have made you a father of many nations. So, Abraham being made a father of many nations did not just happen. From the foundation of the earth, it was already written. Hello, somebody. It was already written. So, Abraham becoming the father of many nations was not just something at the spur of the moment. It wasn't because after he struggled and struggled, God now said, this struggle is too much. Now I change my mind concerning you. I'm making you. He said, as it is written, I have made. Everybody say, I have made. I have made you a father of many nations. Can I say this? Can I say this? Listen to me. If some things were written concerning Abraham, or Abraham, there are things that have been written concerning you too. <laughs> I said, there are some things, if some things were written about Abraham, and it became Abraham, there were things that have been written concerning you. Or else, you'll be an accident of creation. And you are not an accident of, it did not just come. Hello. You know what scripture is? Scripture is just scripts that has been written for creation. Scripture is just script that has been written for creation. Your responsibility is to find out what has been written concerning you. And the things that have been written concerning you have already been decided concerning you. Hello? Hello? There are things that have been decided before you were ever formed, before you were ever born. You need to find them out. And why is that so important? Because what God finished before you were born cannot be frustrated in time. The moment you find them out, you hold on to those words. Let me give you an example. Regarding your parents, the parents... The place of your birth. The people that gave birth to you. They were not an accident. <laughs> oh. I, 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 how can I help us to understand this? That the, 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 your mother and your father. Your parents were not an accident. Oh my mother. Oh my dad. He didn't do this or he didn't do that. That is beside that. But because God did decided, because of his plan, and there are things that he has invested in them to help you to fulfill your destiny. So he looked at the entire world, said, I'm giving so and so to this as a vehicle to come to the earth. Let me show you. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 3. So for I deliver to you first of all, that which I also receive, that Christ died, what? For our sins according to what? Christ died according to for I delivered you first of all that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to script written concerning him. So he didn't just go to the cross. It's been determined that he will do that. He died according to the scriptures. Let's continue. And he was buried and that he rose again on the third day according to, according to scriptures. So it was not an accident. Hello. He died according to the script written concerning him. 
what has been written concerning you? Abraham became the father of many nations because it was a script written. Hello, somebody. And he says, let's go back there. Let's go back there. Romans chapter number 4, verse number 17. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. He is our father in the sight of God, in whom he now what? Who wrote the script? God. What was the part of Abraham? He believed what was written. He believed whom he believed, the God who gives life to what? So what was the circumstance of Abraham at this time? His body was dead. And Sarah's womb was dead. But in the midst of the contradiction, he chose to believe. Did his natural situation, was he able to stop what was written? Oh, I need to come here. Because I think I only had no here. Some of us here are still wondering. Eh? 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 I said, was his natural situation able to stop what was written concerning him? Okay, let me again take you back. Abraham's, at this time, when Abraham believed, his body was what? His body was what? Dead. Uh, and Sarah's womb was also what? Was also dead. And in the midst of the contradictions to the word, prophetic word given to him, Abraham decided to do something else. He believed God in spite of. And the God who gives, the moment he believed, what happens? The moment he believed, what happens? Oh, my, my, my. Okay, follow me. And God who gives life to the dead and calls the things that be not as though they were, they were. Now let's go. Verse 18. Romans chapter number 4. Who against what? Against all hope. Abraham in hope believed. Against all what? Against all natural hope. Where was, where was, when you say against all hope, He's talking about the natural hope. What was his natural hope? No, no, no. What was his natural hope? If his body was still what? Young, alive, and strong. He would have looked at his body and said, well, I'm still young. I'm a young man. Hello? But when the back was already bent, when the body was already what? Dead. There was no natural hope. So against all hope. I'm reading from NIV now. Abraham in what? Hope. So what was his hope now? Where was his hope coming from? From the promise. So can you hope against all hope? Because that's what he's saying here. Can you hope against all? Can you look at the natural situation and it's like there's no way here? And can you now, in spite of that, choose something else because of the hope you've received from the promise? Absolutely. Absolutely. And because he did that, he now became the father of many nations. Just as it had been said to him, so shall your offspring be. Verse number 19. Without weakening in his faith, he faced the fact that his body was as good as dead. His body was as good as dead. Abraham was not denying the fact that his body was dead. But he decided to believe in spite of. Amen. Since he was about a hundred years old, and also Sarah's womb was also dead. Verse number 20. What, what happened? 
Yet it did not waver through, the, through unbelief regarding promise of God, but was strengthened in faith and gave glory to God. I want us to stop here. And I want us to look at something. Before you go to verse 21, the Bible says that Abraham believed. And the last time I was talking about it, not last Sunday, I said it was Abraham's choice to believe. Abraham chose to believe. Abraham could have refused to believe. Why? Because, because of the natural situation. Because of the natural circumstance. But Abraham chose to believe in spite of the natural situation and circumstance. He chose to believe. And the Lord said to me yesterday, I was meditating on that. I said, not only did he choose to believe, he chose to agree with the promise he gave to him. Why is that so important? Why is that so important? You know, when the prophetic word is released, your agreement is important. Your agreement is important. Because if you don't agree with it, then you cut off the ability of that prophetic word to be performed in your life. God is not American magic at all. When the word of God is released, this 2023 is a year of of what? Of laughter. It's a year of fulfillment of pro prophetic promise. It's a year of supernatural harvest. God has done his own part. Now you now need to what, do your own part. What is your own part? You will now what, make a choice to believe by agreeing with the word that God has spoken. If you don't agree with it, then what happens? Like we saw there, there will be what? I gave, I tried to give doctor the iPad. I said, take the iPad. And then, but as long as his, his hands were at his back, he could not. Suppose I decided to tape the, uh, put the iPad on him. I said, yeah, you, by force, by force, you must take, I place it on him. The moment he moves from where, what happens? The iPad falls away. Falls away. And if the iPad is on, as long as the iPad is on the floor, is he receiving the iPad? Eh? Is he receiving the iPad? Even though I wanted to give him. Even though I, this special iPad, I said I must give it to him. Unless his hands are stretched hard to receive, then what happens? He falls away. Falls away. Can you see that you have a role to play? Do you know that you can choose? It is only when you choose to agree with what God has said that there is a performance of that word in your life. Amen. Praise God. Now, let me say this. Let me, let me say this. Somebody said, oh God, I don't know why I'm finding it difficult. Just force me to believe. Force me to agree. He will not force you. Why will he not force you? Because God cannot violate your will. God cannot violate. You know the reason why, why rape is considered as a very terrible sin according to the law? You know the reason why? Why? Because, because the will of somebody else has been violated. And if you violate the will, the law will hold you responsible, accountable, that you don't violate. Why would the Lord do that? Because God has chosen not to what? Violate your will. He will not force you to do anything against your will. But he's asking you to agree with him so that he can now perform what he has promised to do. Can you now see that you're a very important piece of the equation? 
let me point something out. At this time that Abraham agreed, how was, what was his natural circumstance? He was old. He was like what? He was 99. Is there any 99 year old man in the house? Hello? Have you seen how there was a time that we had a, a, a man in church, Brother Fernandez. Do you remember Brother Fernandez? At that time, Brother Fernandez was about, I think he was close to 80. And still remember him clearly. He's pastor now. When he comes to church, you know how? Because he's what? He's what? He's old. He's old. That is why you don't despise an old man because he's now what? He's now old because a day is coming too. And I may get there. Are you listening to me? So how do you think Abraham will be at 99? What? How do you think Abraham will be walking at 99? Eh? How will he be walking? Not, not, not 89. 99. How do you think be, do you think he'll be walking like this? How will he be walking? Old. Because the body was world. And now the promise now came and said, You're going to have a child. You're going to have a child. The promise will be fulfilled. The promise will be fulfilled. How do you think, Abraham? How will it be at that time? Because in the natural, there was nothing to encourage you. Why am I emphasizing that? That sometimes there may be nothing in the natural to encourage you. But still, it doesn't mean that you cannot believe. You can choose to believe. Believing or agreeing with God's word is your choice. Is your choice. Not because of your natural circumstance. Oh, the reason why I cannot be pastor, maybe is because my, the bank account is saying, no, 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 no. That's a natural circumstance. You can choose to believe in spite of that. Hello. Oh, you know, uh, I don't want to I look. No, no, no. You can choose to believe in spite of the natural circumstance. You can choose to believe. Can I show you an example what that is a choice to believe? And that unless you believe, there's no performance. Let me take you to John chapter 20. John chapter 20. Let me take you to a friend whose name is called who? What? John chapter 20. John chapter 20. Who is there? I'm reading... From verse 24. Now Thomas called the twin. One of the twelve was not with them. When Jesus came to the other disciples. When Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said to him. We have seen the Lord. So he said to them. Unless I see in his hand the print of the nails. And I put my finger into the print of the nails. And put my hand into his side. I will not walk. I will not believe. So it is. What is happening there? I what? Will not believe. So it was in the exercising of his will. That's involved there. He chose not to believe. I will not believe. So your will is involved. Whether you believe or not. Can I show you somebody else? Who believe in spite of the natural circumstance? Let me take you to Mary. Look. Look, chapter number one, from verse 26. Look, chapter number one. I want to let us know that your natural circumstance, everything might not look like it. The body might be dead, the account might be empty. The situation might be not looking good at all in the natural, but you can choose to believe God's word and God will perform his word in spite of the natural circumstance of your life. What is a miracle? 
A miracle is the suspension of the natural and a superimposition of the supernatural. We are not natural people. If you say you are a believer, a believer is someone that the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit is living inside of that person. And the Holy Spirit has not come to just life follow there. The Holy Spirit coming into you is to turn you from the natural to the supernatural. So that you can start to walk supernaturally. In the natural, thank you. Supernaturally, in the natural. Let me share with you the testimony of one of us. She applied for this job. And they put in there, you need five years qualification to be able to apply. Unless you have this, they put it in bold letters. Is to fend some people off. That means if you don't have five years, or if you don't have this prerequisite number of years, don't word, apply. And she looked at it. And she said, but this year is my year of super... Super what? Supernatural harvest. This is my year. She said, normally, those things would deter me. Because they put it there. They didn't put it there. In, you know, there's something called small print. In small print, you may fail to notice it. Those ones put it there to deceive people. So that you will have jumped into it. They said, didn't you read this one? He said, what is that? It's at the back there. But they put it in bold letter. Don't apply if you don't have this. But she considered what? The promise. She considered the word and applied. Because she wanted it. She wanted said, this is the area I love. This is where I want to serve. The first miracle was they called her for, called her for interview. And by the time they concluded, they wrote her a letter. And they said that we've looked at your resume. And the, your, the way you perform in the interview. But we have the requirement that unless you have five years, you cannot qualify to this. But because we, we want you to be there, we have decided to create this new position for you. We have created this new position for you. And you know the one, that one that you apply for? We are going to be paying you the same money for that one. And then you, are, you will choose your hours of work. We are going to train you to become that one. And we are going to do everything like this. I am not talking to you about something, blah, 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 blah. I am talking to you about what? These are experiences. Are you listening to me? I have the letters. I have everything. They are there on my iPad. So I am not just, I am not just, I have everything there. Everything there. They say you did not have the years, but we have decided to qualify the unqualified. <laughs> qualify the unqualified. And is it that, that particular one that you said you wanted? We are paying you exactly the same thing. The job was created for her on the 38th of August this year. 38th of August this year. 38th of August. You know, are there people who have seen don't apply, they will have gone back? Many. Are there people who will have said, well, you know, this, this thing does not qualify? That is why when I remember his promises, I shout hallelujah. 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 Yeah. Somebody say, oh, 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 but sometimes we need to face reality. But she faced that reality. What is the reality? The reality of God's word. The reality of God's promise. Will you choose to face the reality of God's promise? 
and choose to face the reality of God's word in spite of what your natural circumstances is saying and say, but I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. I believe. How about Mary? In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to the city of Galilee. Name what? Nazareth. Let's continue. To a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David, the virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women. But when she saw him, she was troubled at the saying, and consider what manner of greeting this was. And then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb, and bring forth a son, and shall call his name... Jesus. Was she married at this time? Not only that, he said he will be great and be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father, what? David. Amen. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And his kingdom, there will be no end. Verse number, th- then Mary said to the angel, how can this what be? Since I do not what? I do not know a man. How can this be? Since the body is already too old. How can this thing be? Because I don't have that money in my account. How can this thing be? Because of this, how can this thing be? That is where sometimes we nullify the promise. Because we do not agree with the promise. Whenever God gives promise, it's not relying on you to bring it to pass. It's just, he wants your cooperation. He wants your agreement. Because the moment you agree, then grace is released. So that you can become. The challenge is that we don't, we, we just, we are so fixated on our natural circumstance. We look, we, are, we fix our eyes, look at this one, look at that one. Even before you get to the interview, you have already disqualified yourself. You've disqualified yourself. God is the one that qualifies the unqualified. He's not, he's not the one that disqualified the reward, the unqualified. Because the unqualified is already what? He's not qualified. Now, verse 36. And the angel said to her, Now indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived what? Conceived. Th- 36. I mean, 36. Let's go there. Now, indeed, Elizabeth, your relative has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is now the sixth month for her who was called barren. For with God. For we what? For we what? Who gave the promise? Who gave the promise? Who gives the grace? Who gives the ability? He said, for with God, nothing will be what? Impossible. Verse number 38. He now said, let's go to, then Mary said, it was at that point, she plugged into the promise. Lord, let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Verse 45. What now happened? Then Mary arose in those, uh, 45. Then blessed is she who would believe, for there will be a fulfillment or performance of those things which were told her. Let me say this. It's not your natural circumstance that is stopping you. It's not your natural situation that is hindering you. No, 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 no. Those things are there. But don't forget with God. I say with God. With God. Where is the problem of the challenge? The with God aspect. The with God, with God aspect. So Abraham chose to what? Believe. Abraham agreed with the promise. Let's go to Matthew 18, 19. Matthew 18, verse number 19. Matthew 18, verse number 19. What does it say? If two of you shall agree, again I say to you, that if two of you agree on earth concerning anything, 
that they ask it to be done concerning what let's go there if what two of you agree concerning what anything 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 everybody say anything anything if two of you agree where on earth concerning anything that we that they ask it shall be done for them by my word so if two of you will agree on earth and it will be done how much more when you choose to agree with the father in heaven how much more when you choose to agree with god's word god said if two of you shall what agree on earth if two of you he didn't even say ten he didn't even say can you see how powerful our prayer platform can be because on that prayer platform sometimes we are those are the views you don't know the people behind the views if you put everybody together behind the views you can be talking about let's say about 50 you know about 50 and if 50 people are green if two people will agree and something will how about 50 people how about 50 people let's even say about 10 people if two will agree on earth can we now see if you now choose to agree with god's word god's promise would there not be a performance can you see that our church can become so powerful the moment there's agreement the moment we can all agree with what God has promised us and not disqualify yourself and not focus on your natural inability or your natural what you don't have and say look at me, look at this, look at that but you focus on the one that has promised and then you now say this verse 20 what, what is verse 20? you now said for where two or three are gathered together in my name, I'm there in the midst of them. I'm there in the midst of them. Abraham chose to believe. Abraham, in spite of the natural circumstances, he chose to believe. Secondly, let me now show you what else Abraham did. Romans 4, verse 19. Romans 4, verse 19. Look at it. Look at it. Look at it. Because this is not natural. Natural people don't do this. Natural people don't do this at all. And not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body already what? Dead. Since he was about a hundred years old. And the deadness of Sarah. So I, I, I like to use my imagination. Well, it's the instrument of my dominion. I can imagine the naming ceremony of Abraham and Sarah's children. You say, who are the people naming the children today? Uh -uh. I could imagine those who have laughed at him when he changed his name to Abraham. I could imagine those who have despised him and said, look at, look at these people, they are not serious. I could imagine those who have laughed, they said, you're talking about come, what, what come, what, what is it? You know? But just wait. Just wait. The day came when he was naming the baby. When mama was naming the baby. When papa was naming the baby. It's easy when you see who are the parents of the, you know, see them like this. Oh, yes, the man is strong. The woman is there, ready, you know. But when they're old, it's a totally different thing. But the Bible says he did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving what? Abraham was giving glory to God before the performance of the promise. Do you want to increase your capacity to receive from God? You didn't hear me. Do you, do you want to increase your capacity to receive from God? Cultivate the attitude of thanksgiving. Giving glory to God is giving him thanks. Especially, somebody say, I will thank him when I've seen it. You're going to wait for a very long time. But if you learn to give glory to God when the pain is still there, and say, Lord, I thank you that you are turning this around for me. 
When you choose to give glory to God when nothing is looking like it. When you choose to give glory to God when you have not moved to the campus yet. And say, Father, thank you for the campus. It is done. When you choose to give glory to God when even other... And do you know, can I tell you something? When you said, um, because when you say, I'm going to give glory to God, I'm going to obey this word, there are people that will laugh at you. And they uh, uh, because you've heard the word today, you've heard the word, and then you are, you are going, hallelujah, praise God, I'm going to give glory to God, I'm going to get there. Someone will say, but why are you so happy today? But you know, I'm giving glory to God, I'm expecting this, I'm expecting that. Someone say, why do you deceive yourself? And before you know what is happening, if you listen to that person, it's like cold water poured on the believing. He said, that is really true. Eh? And, then, and then before you know what is happening, you've forgotten about it. No. Abraham gave glory to God. Giving glory to God when there was no child. He was giving glory to God. 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 There's music on your inside. You don't need instruments to worship God. You don't even need a good voice to worship God. You need a good voice to lead the church in worship. Hello? Because if the voice is not, you can go in this direction and, you know, but in your own room, in your own, you can play your own orchestra there and worship God. When God created you, he gave you the capacity to worship so that in spite of it, you can give him glory and give him glory and give him glory and give him glory when you can't feel it yet, when you can't touch it yet, when you can't feel it yet, when you can't touch it yet. Why is this so important? Because answers to prayers is the ministry of angels. The moment you are giving glory, angels will descend. Are you listening to me? They will descend. And when they descend, they are not just descending to watch you give glory. They have descended to perform the words you are declaring. Because whenever they hear the word, when they ever they hear praise, praise. Oh, I remember a song we used to sing many years ago that praise is the food I eat. Praise is the food I eat. When you start to praise him, ho, 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 when you start to give him praise, something is happening, not just all around you, but also in the heavenly realm. Angels are taking, say, what is happening? Somebody is praising God there. And you know what? They are attracted to you in droves. And they're not just, they will not just come there to just admire. No, no, no. They will receive the praise and it will go before heaven like a sweet smelling servant. And the father said, hmm, I love that. That's, that is good. That is one of mine. And Jesus will say, yes, that, that's one of mine. That's why he's praising. You know, he, he's still feeling the pain. He's still feeling the pain. Okay, now angel so and so eliminate the pain. Angel so and so make available that provision. Angel so and so make available that particular thing. Why? Because you're giving glory to God. Practice giving glory to God when you don't feel it. Practice giving glory to God when the thing is not there. Practice giving glory to God when nothing is happening. Practice, practice giving glory to God when the promise is totally, when you are devoid of the promise. You know what will happen? You will accelerate the performance of the promise in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. That is what will distinguish you from unbelievers. When you choose to give him glory in spite of. When you choose to give him glory despite of. When you choose to give him glory, the Lord, I believe this by time of deliverance. Is it by time of turnaround? It, uh, uh, and the rest of it like that. And whatever it is you are believing God for, you start to give him glory and give him glory and give him glory. When those who are laughing at you, just say, just be laughing. Just be laughing. Very soon you come and laugh with me. Uh, and do you know what? Oh, if you do that, they will eventually come and laugh with you. They will come and laugh with you. One of our sisters saw me as she was walking to church this morning. He said, I must share this testimony with you. I must share this testimony with you. He said, I heard you were there, Angela. You were, were there together when she was sharing. He said, I heard the message you preach. If you, the, the Lord said to me, go and listen to what pastor said. When, when I was asked, when are you moving to the campus? And I just mentioned, and, and I said, can you see what, what he has done there? He said, no, you also start to declare the things that you desire to see. And it was, she was facing that almost an impossible situation with government. But she says, no, this can be done. 
Uh, and there were others around her who probably did not agree with her in that way, but she did not stop that, stop her from, from doing that. But she kept on, and the pastor said, I mean, the, the Holy Spirit said to her, well, did you see what pastor said there? Did you see what pastor said there? And she was practicing it, she was practicing it, and just like, in fact, she said, she was so excited, she was so excited, and you know what they said could not be done. What they said they would never do. The same department of government came back and said, no, we, 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 we've done it, and we've released it, we've changed it for you, and everything like that. He said, wow. He said, wow. He said, wow. He said, I'm so excited. I just wanted to share that with you. I'm saying, yeah. I, I, could, oh, I looked at her. She was so filled with excitement. And I said, Lord, I just want to thank God for her. She's here. I'm sure she's listening to what I'm saying. Because I was, we were there together when she was sharing it this morning. When she was sharing it with us this morning. And then the, the, the word of God works. When you choose to give him glory. My emphasis this morning is this. Start to give him glory in spite of. Start to give him glory despite of. Start to give him glory when you have not seen it. Start to give him glory when the sin seems to be there. Start to give him glory especially when you are faced with a long-standing issue, give him glory that your time of deliverance, remember, he has given us a word, total word, total word, total word, total word, Restor total word, restoration. Give him glory and say, it is my year of total restoration. It is my season of total restoration. It is my season of total restoration. Concerning this area, it is my season of total restoration. Thank you, Father, for my restoration. Thank you, Father, for my re giving me glory for your restoration. Yeah, and then as you do that, not what you do after service, not what you do occasionally, but what you do all consistently. And then you are going to see what? Your story would not become like that of Abraham. Somebody said, but this only happened to Abraham. Are you sure it will happen? Look, look at verse 21. What is verse 21 saying? Verse 21 says, what? and he became fully convinced that what he had promised was able to uh, perform. Continue, please. And then what happened? And therefore, it was accounted to him for righteousness. Now, it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him but also for us it shall be imputed who believe in him who raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead rise up from your feet so this was not written just for Abraham alone but for each and every one of us can we just thank him can we, give, can we just appreciate him this morning and give him glory 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 for the word you've heard. Give him glory for again coming to you this morning and said, yes, give him glory. Just give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Just thank him. 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 This is in spite of our natural circumstance. This is in spite of our natural situation. This is in spite of whatever you have been going through. It's in spite of that. But if you choose to give him glory, then this will become your experience. Just give him glory. Just give him glory. Just thank him. Just thank him. Just thank him. Give him glory. Just give him glory. Just give him glory. First, thank him for the message you have heard this morning. Thank him for the message you have heard. Thank him also. Thank him, thank him, thank him, thank him. That this is your season of total restoration. In the name, of, open your mouth and thank him. This is your season of total restoration. In the name of Jesus Christ. The restoration, the restoration. This is your season. This is your season. This is your season. This is my season. In the name of Jesus Christ. This is your season. This is my season. In the name of Jesus Christ. Riba ba 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 ka to 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 lo ka se ki entete. Zibe se li ba so ko to to lo ba se ke she li ba se 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 rea. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we want to thank you this morning. I present everyone before you. Under the sound of my voice. Thank you so much, O Lord my God. It is a season of total restoration. God sent his son. They called him Jesus. He came to love. He learned forgive. He lived.
dun dun to buy my pardon an empty grave is that to show my savior name again god sent his son god sent his son they called him jesus he came to saying to me he said because I live all fear is gone he said because I live because the son of God is alive all fear is gone therefore your fear concerning those children why don't they why don't you put them in my hands? Stop focusing on that particular situation. Stop focusing on that natural situation. Focus on me, says the Lord. For I am the one that can cause a turnaround in that challenging situation. Take your eyes off the natural. Do you know you sometimes try to do that? And things will happen that will take your focus back to that thing. It is the enemy trying to distract you from me so that you will not be able to connect with my power and ability to change it. But when things start to happen and it's taking your focus from me, put your focus back on the promise I've given you, on my word to you, and on who I am. For I am the great I am. I am the great I am. And I am who I am. And I've remained the same yesterday, today, and forever. Let your eyes be on my ability. Let your eyes be on who I am. On my power to change, to transform that situation. Let me say this to you. Because after you've heard my word, situations will still happen again. That will want to discourage you. But I'm sharing something with you today. That when those things start to happen, just start to laugh. Instead of you feeling down, feeling bad, just start to laugh. 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 You may not feel like laughing. Laugh. 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 Because it's your year of laughter. Just start to laugh. And if you 
learn to laugh. Just trust in my word. Very soon, you will laugh because of the reality of that word. Just start to laugh and laugh and laugh. In fact, laugh aloud. Just laugh aloud. Can somebody laugh this morning? Just laugh. Just laugh. Just laugh. <laughs> I know you are, I know you have not la- I said laugh. Just laugh. Just laugh. Just laugh. Just laugh. Just laugh. Just laugh. <laughs> ah, thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We give you praise, Jesus. We worship and we adore you.